video is part one of my guide to riding a bicycle through the winter and in this video I'm going to talk about what my recommendations are in terms of uh, what sort of a bike I recommend using if you're planning on riding your bicycle through the winter. I'm also going to make a part two of this series where I'm going to talk about what my recommendations are in terms of what sort of clothing I recommend wearing for various different temperatures that you'd experience um, while riding a bicycle through the winter. So to introduce myself, I'm CJ Hoyle and I live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada and uh, living in the city here, um, I don't own a car, I rely on my bicycles as my primary uh, form of transportation. Uh, so I use them for pretty much getting everywhere, um, including you know, going and meeting friends or going and running errands and I even ride my bicycles uh, to and from work every single day. Now Toronto happens to be located in one of the southernmost parts of Canada, so we don't see the most extreme sort of temperatures that uh, some of the northern cities do. Um, we do see temperatures that drop as low as about negative 30 Celsius, and uh, we do still get uh, annual snowfall of about 120 centimeters, or about 50 inches. However, despite this climate, I still ride my bicycles all through the winter. Um, including the, the coldest days of the year and the snowiest days of the year and right now I'm filming this video on the 14th of February and I haven't missed a single day yet this winter. So these are the two bikes that I use for riding throughout the year. Uh, this one here is my newer of the two. Um, it's an aluminum framed hybrid bike and it has uh, 700c wheels and uh, this is my older green machine bike uh, which has a steel frame and it has 26 inch wheels. In my experience, if you're going to be using a bicycle as your primary mode of transportation, um, I find it pretty helpful to use two bikes for doing that uh, because if you happen to have something go wrong on one of your bikes, if something breaks or something, you're not able to get it fixed right away, it's really good to have a backup bike that you can rely on um, until you get your first one fixed. Another advantage of having two bikes during the winter is that you can gear them for different sort of weather conditions because during the winter uh, the weather is pretty much changing every day. Some days you'll have you know really snowy roads and the next day you'll have you know some wet roads and then you'll have dry roads or icy roads. It's always changing and uh, having two bikes means you can adapt one of the bikes so it's really good for snow where you can leave the other one so it's really good just for regular dry sort of pavement that you're used to during the summer. So that's exactly what I've done with my two bikes here. Um, I've left my uh, Rally Sport uh, hybrid bike as pretty much the way that it was when I was riding it during the summer. I really haven't changed anything on it uh, where I've adapted my green machine for being really good for riding through ice and snow. So the first thing I'm going to talk about are my tires and uh, this bike here has my regular summer tires on it which work really well for wet and dry pavement whereas this bike here has tires which are specifically made for riding through snow and ice. Uh, so as you can see they're very very knobby they have lots of texture to the outside of them uh, but they also have a really special feature which is they have uh, little metal spikes in them which come every centimeter or so and that does a really great job of uh, biting into the snow and ice and keeping your wheel from sliding. If you don't want to invest in studded winter tires, one thing you can do to increase your traction a little bit is you can lower the tire pressure inside of your tires. Uh, so a typical mountain bike tire, during the summer I would usually load to about uh, 40 psi or so, uh, but during the winter you can lower it down to you know maybe 25 psi or maybe even as low as 20 psi and uh, that'll definitely uh, help you get a little bit more traction from your tires. There seem to be a lot of mixed opinions on whether using studded tires or not is really something that's necessary um, in a climate like Toronto. There's a lot of people that say we don't really get a lot of snow here and uh, you can get away with not having them and, and that's true, you can get away with it. Um, but I think a lot of people that are giving those opinions are people that haven't really used studded tires and for me, when I first started using them, I was so impressed with you know, how much safer they made me feel on my bike. Um, just comparing my two bikes right now, being having the ability you know, to take either one out on a snowy day, I find that I feel so much safer riding with the studded tires. Um, you know, if I'm riding next to a car, I really don't want to be worried about you know, some, some, somehow my back wheel kind of drifting a bit and me drifting out into traffic and you know, getting in an accident with the car. We've actually had quite a cold winter this year and there's been a lot of snow and back in uh, December we actually had quite a bad ice storm. And uh, this winter I've sure definitely made a whole lot of use of my green bike with the studded tires. Um, I'm pretty sure I've used it more than 50% of the time uh, for riding back and forth to work. 
Um, so I definitely do recommend having studded tires on your bike um, if you're riding in a climate like Toronto. So in terms of brakes, probably the very best option uh, for using for a bike that you're going to be riding through the winter is a bike that has disc brakes. And of course the advantage of disc brakes is that they use a an external rotor which gets mounted here and uh, you know the brake pad grips onto that rotor instead of gripping onto the uh, the rim and the advantage of that is that hopefully this is going to stay you know quite a bit more dry and clean than your rim is that's going this close to the road and then it's coming up here and then it's being squeezed by your brake pads here however as you'll notice neither of my bikes actually have disc brakes they both use this style of brakes uh, which are called V-brakes, and I actually really like V-brakes. I've made a few videos before in the past uh, where I've shown how to do maintenance tasks on V-brakes, and what I like about them is that they're, uh, there's lots of little ways on them to make little adjustments so that you can get the V-brakes uh, tuned exactly the way that you want them. Uh, so they're going to do a really, really good job of stopping when you press on the brakes. As I mentioned, having disc brakes would probably be a bit more effective than uh, using V-brakes like I use. Um, however, due to the fact that I'm able to keep my V-brakes so that they're always really well tuned and really, you know, adjusted so they're getting, you know, your maximum amount of stopping power out of them, um, I find that my V-brakes do a really good job and I'm really happy with them and I'm really not planning on upgrading to disc brakes anytime soon. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that when you're riding during the winter, you're generally not going to be riding as fast as you would be um, on a hot summer's day. Um, so having brakes that are a little bit less effective than uh, disc brakes is not that much of a hazard in my opinion. So as you can see, both of my bikes have these plastic things on them, on both the front and back wheel, which are called fenders, and what they're used for is preventing spray from the road from getting sprayed up on the rider. Uh, so if you're riding through water, it's gonna keep you from getting you know, all wet when you're riding, and uh, the question is, do I recommend having these on a bike that you're gonna ride in the winter? If you're riding on a wet day, then I definitely do recommend them. However, uh, in my experience with riding during snowy conditions, I actually find that the fenders um, actually kind of work against you because uh, what happens is that snow gets you know stuck to the bottom of the tire here, and then it comes up through here, and then I find that inside of my fender here gets all clogged up with snow, and every time that my wheel goes around, then my wheel is you know rubbing against that snow there, and uh, I actually find that it slows me down quite a bit. So in previous winters, I've actually taken my, uh, my fenders off of my bike with the studded tires uh, to try and deal with that problem. Um, however, what that doesn't cover are the days uh, when it's slushy. So when it's halfway between being snowy and being wet is when it's slushy and it's just this really mushy stuff that you're riding through. And uh, basically you want to have your studded tires because it's still quite slippery to ride through. Uh, but you also have quite a bit of messy, really gross spray that's coming up and you really don't want that you know getting all over you when you're riding uh, so for those days you definitely want to have your fenders on uh, so in a nutshell I basically say it's worthwhile having fenders on your bike in the winter um, even though it's a little bit of a nuisance on the days when it's really fluffy and snowy um, it's definitely worthwhile to have them for the days when it's slushy Having lights on your bike is definitely a good idea, especially for riding during the winter, uh, because things get darker uh, quite a bit early during the winter, and right now, uh, at this time of the year, it actually gets dark around 5 o'clock, uh, so you'll find that you frequently will get caught um, riding in the dark. Another important thing to make sure is that the type of batteries that you're using in your lights um, are still effective when exposed to colder temperatures because the last thing you want is to come out to get on your bike after it's been locked up outside in the cold and find that your lights don't work or that they don't you know blink very brightly because the batteries have gotten really cold. In my experience I found that alkaline batteries do a pretty good job in the cold uh, compared to other types like heavy duty batteries. Of course with any physical activity it's always a good idea to stay hydrated while you're doing it and of course Winter bicycling is no exception to that. Um, so of course you want to bring a water bottle with you when you're riding in the winter, um, but you'll find that if you use a, a regular sort of a water bottle like this one, um, that of course when the temperature is below freezing that the water is going to freeze and you're not going to be able to drink out of it. And uh, I actually find in the half hour ride between home and work, if the temperature is below about negative five, that by the time I get to work, uh, the bottle's not completely frozen, but it's frozen enough that I'm no longer to be able to get any liquid out of it. So my advice for winter cycling is to get one of these special insulated water bottles, which I find does a really good job of keeping you know your water insulated from the really cold outdoor temperatures, uh, so that you're able to ride a fair distance before the water starts to freeze. 
I'm pretty sure these were actually designed with summer cyclists in mind uh, because during the summer you want to be riding with water that's not too warm and uh, the insulation does the same thing. You can fill this water bottle up with you know cold water and ice and uh, the insulation is going to prevent uh, you know the warm outside air from getting inside there and uh, warming up your water and making it hot. I should point out however if you're using this bottle during the winter and you're riding somewhere uh, whenever you get to where you're going you should bring this water bottle inside with you uh, because if you leave it outside on the bike it probably still will freeze um, although it is insulated it's not like an infinite amount of insulation it does a good job of slowing down the process of freezing um, but it is still going to freeze eventually if you leave it outside. Another thing that I use when I'm riding in the winter is this small brush here and uh, I use it for brushing off all the snow that accumulates on my bike because you'll find that when you ride in the winter there's a big glob of snow that gets stuck up there and there's a bunch that gets stuck in your derailleur and kind of in your fenders and uh, near your brakes and stuff. There's a whole bunch of little areas where the snow just gets accumulated and not just the snow, the slush does as well. And uh, since I bring my bikes inside my apartment here, um, it's really important to try and get them as free of slush and snow and stuff before I bring it inside because all that stuff is going to melt um, all over my floor once I get it inside. Um, I actually got this carpet here um, a while ago for uh, trying to keep my, my floor so it would be uh, so I wouldn't damage my floor and get it all dirty every time I brought uh, bikes in there. Um, and as you can see it's quite dirty the carpet is. Uh, when I first got that carpet it was quite clean and uh, um, I also have that white plastic liner which I put underneath there um, afterwards because um, although the carpet does a really good job of catching all of that slush and snow and stuff, um, it just basically just soaks it up and you've got this you know wet sloppy carpet that's sitting there on top of this hardwood floor and I was uh, worried that the moisture from that might do some damage to the floor uh, so I put that plastic shower curtain underneath there uh, to try and protect the wood a little bit uh, from the moisture of the carpet. But nevertheless, storing a winter bike inside is really not ideal uh, because it is quite messy. I mean, you can see that the, the, uh, the pathway here between the door and where I store my bike um, is quite dirty. And I do clean it quite frequently, but pretty much every time you bring your bike in, um, it gets dirty again. Uh, so if you have somewhere else where you can store your bike uh, that's not inside of you know, your regular living space, that would be ideal. As you can see that salt and slush and snow and stuff leaves an awful lot of white residue all over my frame and my fenders and my components and my chain and everything. Um, and that's because in Canada and a lot of other uh, northern countries and colder climates uh, they use a lot of salt and sand on the road and the salt is really the part that does the damage because salt is very corrosive and uh, the frame on this bike has actually been you know, quite damaged. All the paint is peeled off around here and down here uh, from that corrosion. So this bike here actually has an aluminum frame and aluminum is actually quite a bit more corrosion resistant than steel is and uh, when I was looking for a new bike I really wanted to make sure that I got one that had an aluminum frame uh, for that very reason for riding in the winter with uh, you know salty conditions and uh, so far this winter it seems to be holding up really really well. I'm pretty sure you know at the end of the season I'll be able to just wash it down and all of this salt residue will just wash off and it'll look as good as new uh, with no damage to it. Um, however, um, aside from the frame, there's still all sorts of other components on the bike uh, that are not made of aluminum that are still made out of steel, uh, like all the drivetrain components and uh, for example the spokes here, um, you know, they're, they're definitely going to be rusty uh, for riding through the winter. Um, so definitely I would still recommend getting an aluminum frame if you can, but remember that you know, just getting an aluminum frame doesn't mean that your bike's going to be bulletproof in terms of corrosion. So on that note on corrosion, something else that gets quite affected by all of the, the salt that's on the road um, is your chain. It gets quite badly corroded as well. Uh, and that's probably because there's the part of the chain that's down here uh, which runs quite close to the road and it gets quite a bit of salt spray on it. And uh, you'll find that during the winter you need to reapply uh, chain lube to your, your chain quite frequently. Uh, basically every time that you take your, uh, your bike out for a spin, it's a good idea to take a look at your chain. And uh, if it starts looking a little bit brown, then I recommend uh, just reapplying chain lube on there. As you can see, this chain here is due for being re-lubricated again. 
Um, of course, if you just keep reapplying and reapplying, uh, your chain is going to start looking like mine. It's going to be, you know, quite gummed up. There's going to be all sorts of, uh, you know, residue that's all on the outside of there. And uh, I mean, you can all you can you can clean that off every time that you reapply it. But if you're reapplying chain lube every single week then uh, it's quite labor intensive uh, to be cleaning that all the time and I actually don't think you know having that gunk on there is a real big problem um, if anything it probably helps prevent more corrosion from occurring because it kind of cakes the outside uh, like an undercoating does on a car uh, to help prevent it from further corroding uh, so my advice is to just kind of leave it there and then wait until the spring when you're sure there's not going to be any more salts and then you can do a really good cleaning of your drivetrain uh, including your, your rear derailleur and your, uh, your sprockets, your, your front cogs and everything. And uh, you can make sure everything's really clean and uh, good as new for the start of the spring and the summer. Another frequent maintenance issue that you might experience with your bike in the winter um, is the cables getting frozen inside of the cable housing. And it happens most frequently around uh, the times when it's you know just around the freezing point. Uh, because you know you'll have a morning or something uh, when it's kind of warm and it's wet and it's raining or something and then you leave your bike outside and it's cold and uh, what happens is some moisture probably has gotten inside of your cable housing here and then it freezes and then it freezes your cable so that it's stuck there in place. The best way to avoid this from happening is at the beginning of the season to make sure that you take all of your cable housings apart and make sure that you get lots of lubricant inside of the cable housings uh, because as we know, oil and water will not mix. Uh, so if you've got the air space that's inside there filled up with oil, um, it's going to prevent the water from seeping its way inside of there and getting your cable frozen. The type of lubricant that I use for my cables is just this stuff. It's actually the stuff that I use uh, for my chain as well. It's just called bike lube. Uh, you can buy various different types of bike lubes uh, from a bicycle store. I actually got this one pretty cheap. It's a cheap one uh, from a department store. Uh, but you can spend you know quite a bit on on bike lube if you want to. Um, I don't personally don't find that it makes an awful lot of difference uh, what kind you use. They all seem to work about the same. And as with any other time of the year, it's always a good idea to make sure that you bring uh, tools with you when you go for a ride um, in case something breaks. And I actually find that um, it usually works out that I have the most things break uh, during the winter, which kind of makes sense because. Um, you know the bike is being exposed to the really hard road conditions and the salt and everything so you know if something's going to go wrong uh, during the winter is probably when it's going to happen um, so of course you do want to bring you know a good collection of tools with you when you're going for a ride and uh, also since you have to take off your winter gloves to work on the bike um, it's a good idea to have a pair of uh, work gloves as well that you can uh, wear while you're working on the bike uh, of course to prevent your hands from getting dirty um, but if also more importantly to prevent your hands from getting really cold being exposed to the colder temperatures of the winter. Well anyway this concludes this segment of my guide to winter cycling and what my recommendations are in terms of choosing or setting up a bicycle uh, for riding through the winter. Uh, everything in this video is based solely on my own personal opinion and it's based on my own personal experiences and it's basically what I find that works for me. Uh, also stay tuned uh, for part two of this video series where I will discuss what my recommendations are in terms of what sort of clothing uh, I find that works really well for me for riding through the winter. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and thanks for watching.